Hello, everybody. This is Dr. Kim speaking to the world. This morning, I'm going to talk about uh, John's Gospel, uh, especially with focus on uh, Johannine uh, worldview. Johannine worldview is, in some sense, is full of uh, dualistic uh, images and concepts. For example, uh, Jesus is the one who comes from God. A heaven, right? He's come from heaven down to earth. So there is also a dualistic thinking there. Also, you know, the world is full of darkness and the world needs light, right? So a dualism between uh, light and darkness. Similarly, between life and no life. So, in many ways, uh, Johannine world is having many kinds of uh, dualisms. You know what? We live in dualisms in good way or bad ways, depending on how you think of uh, dualisms, right? Dualisms can be a good creative struggling space in ways that, you know, you may ask, why we live in a good world where so many bad people, you know, evil, corrupt people are existing and molesting and bothering other human beings? So here the struggling point is that, right? So the world is a good place in, in many ways, but still bad place. Something we don't like it. So much so in John's Gospel, we know such a struggle between a good creation and good world and the world that hates people. In some sense, the world is not a good place. So John 3.16, for example, God so loved the world, so the world must be good because in biblical theology, certainly uh, from Johannine, uh, Johannine uh, community's perspective, certainly the world is God's creation, it must be good. So God loved the world. So he gave his only begotten son because the world is important and good. But at the same time, you know, in John's gospel, the warning is this world is a harsh place. When you are doing good things, the world hates you. But there is evil power, evil people, evil institutions. So many things around you not really helping you. So in that sense, certainly we understand Johannine's struggling point where people, you know, having a hard time understanding this world. At the same time, they have to hear that God loves this world so much. That's why He sent His Son to save the world, not to condemn the world. So, uh, I think we uh, have to know uh, John's Gospel correctly uh, in this way because sometimes we are asked to choose just, you know, one thing. Yes, our goal must be, you know, uh, to choose uh, one thing against the other. For example, we have to choose life. We have to choose, you know, abundance. And we have to choose you know, good life in God or in Christ. But at the same time, it doesn't mean that we have to leave this world as soon as possible, like, you know, Gnostic uh, Christians thought that this world is simply, uh, you know, evil and bad. This is not the place we have to live and work. So for them, the salvation is to get out of the bodily existence because they think the body is a prison. And this world is just evil place. Nothing we can achieve here. No good thing we can find here. Okay? That is a real bad dualism. So John's Gospel does not promote that kind of Gnostic thinking, Gnostic ways of thinking of dualism. Right? So John's Gospel, although it has a, a dualism, but that dualism should be understood in good way. Try to understand both worlds and seriously and faithfully. 
because while we are living in this harsh world, it is not good. We should be careful about this world's power, you know, in many ways uh, bothering people. There are something evil there, I mean, in the world. But it doesn't mean that we should not love this world. Yes, we should love this world because this is God's place and creation, right? That's why ultimately, you know, even John's community, as many scholars believe, and was expelled from the synagogue. Originally, they were part of the synagogue, right? But because of their faith in God, because of their belief that Jesus is the Messiah, they were hated by some people, Jews, and they were eventually separated and expelled from the mainline community synagogue. So, in some sense, you know, John's Gospel reflects the experience and the painful experience of a separation from the mainland community. It's understandable when you are separated from the, you know, certain mother community and your feeling and, you know, must be uh, really bad. So John's Gospel somehow reflects that kind of a defensive theology, you know. You have to survive when you are uh, separated and you have to grow and you have to comfort and your members. It's understandable. So many ways and people thinking this community of John is sectarian. Yes, it's a sectarian, but it is more than that. You know, I think we have to see the kind of potential of this community uh, who has to understand the transforming love of God. Okay? So in one hand, you know, while this world is a harsh place, John's community still has goal to love this world in good way. That's where, you know, when Jesus uh, giving his uh, long farewell speeches, he's prayed to the Father, you know, so protect these people, you know, protect them from the evil one. Jesus does not pray to God, uh, you know, because this world is so harsh, please take them, you know, to your place as soon as possible. No, Jesus did not pray that. He's still thinking that this world must be saved, you know. So he's asking his disciples to stay in the love of God and love the world while you are hated by the world. But still, your mission is not to leave the world, but to love the world. So in that way, you know, Johannine and dualism is kind of resolved in healthy ways. Okay? So that's what I was thinking this morning and uh, try to communicate with you some insights. So if you gain some insights from this uh, morning show, it will be good. And thank you so much. I hope to uh, come back with another topic. Thanks so much, my listeners. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.